Hello and welcome to ProjectWise Administrator Fundamentals Accreditation Course User Settings and User Template In this lesson, we will learn what user settings are as well as setting up user template and getting ready for new user creation. Each ProjectWise user, for instance, John Smith, once he has successfully logged into ProjectWise, has been assigned to a set of user settings. The user settings are usually categorized into two different groups. One group of user setting is referred as user preference. Another group of user setting is referred as user rights. User preference is trivial and should be up to user discretion. For example, users should be able to choose in their ProjectWise Explorer session if they want to display all versions of the document or only display the latest version of the document. Another user preference would be for users to decide if they want to bring up the local document organizer when their ProjectWise Explorer session ends. Document list and user interface both are examples of user preference. They are displayed in ProjectWise Explorer session and so users can choose their user preference. On the other hand, user rights is a set of options that are assigned by ProjectWise administrators. For example, the rights for John to create, rename, but not to delete the folder. The rights for John to create, rename, and delete the documents, but not to create the version of documents. One key thing to remember here is that any user setting, when it is important enough and we don't want to allow users to change it, ProjectWise administrators should remove these entries from displaying it to the users because when users see these options, even if they are off, users can turn them back on when they are in their ProjectWise Explorer session. Here on the left, we have the ProjectWise administrator program. Currently, Lean is the administrator logging into the Bentley Americas Learn 07 data source. By the way, the data source name that users see in ProjectWise Explorer can be different from the actual data source name. On the right, we have ProjectWise Explorer. John Smith is logging into the same data source. John is in his active ProjectWise Explorer session. He can choose a different ProjectWise working directory. He can see his rights for documents. He can see his rights for folders, as well as other settings that are displayed in his ProjectWise session. Lin is the new ProjectWise administrator for this data source and decided that users should not be able to modify their working directory. Users cannot choose folder options or the document option in their user setting. So let's see how we can achieve that. On the left-hand side, in the administrator program, let's go to users, select John Smith, go to the settings tab, working directory. We want to make sure we disable the first option can change the working directory. We also want to go to documents category and disable the first option as well, can change the document settings. We will go to folder category and also disable the first option, can change folder settings. Let's go ahead and hit apply. On the right, John is still in his active session of ProjectWise. In order for John to see the changes that was applied in the administrator program a few seconds ago, John will need to log out from the data source and refresh. Relaunching ProjectWise Explorer is not necessary in this case. Since this is a Bentley hosted data source, and John does not have a Bentley IMS account, he will see the login dialog box, which he will need to enter his username and password and click login. Let's go to the menu bar, tools, options, and go to the settings tab. As we can see, John no longer see the working directory, the document, and the folder. So what we have just learned is that any user setting that ProjectWise administrators don't want users to change it must not be visible to users. What we have seen by now is that we can change user settings in ProjectWise Explorer as well as the ProjectWise Administrator. However, ProjectWise Explorer allows user settings to be changed for the active user only. If we need to modify user settings to multiple users, 
it must be performed in project-wise administrator. We can select multiple users by holding down either the shift or the control key. And then right mouse click on one of the highlighted users and select properties. We see the dialog window opens with the title being properties for multiple items. Let's go to the settings tab. We can see that with the selected users, they cannot modify the working directory. If we want to modify the working directory for the users, please consult with your users first to make sure they check in their documents before changing their user working directory. Let's go to documents category. When we see an option that is color shaded, it means that this option is different for each of the selected users. We will turn this off because we don't want the selected users to see and modify the document options. We don't want the selected users to be able to create versions of the documents. So let's go ahead and disable the option can create version and then hit apply. This is how we can modify user settings for multiple users. We probably just went through only 5% of the configuration options for user settings. It is not ideal for project-wise administrators to repeat setting up all these options once users have access to the data source. A more ideal solution would be for administrators to go through all the options in the user setting and decide what users are entitled to and what they are not entitled to. We can then set up these options in the user template. User template can be accessible via right mouse click on the user's node and select properties. The dialog window with the title user's properties is the user template. Project-wise administrators can set up all the desirable options in the user template. New users will be created based on these desirable options. The working directory. We want to prevent users from modifying the working directory. So go ahead and disable the first option, can change working directory settings. We also want to define a project-wise working directory folder location. So go ahead and double click on when using project-wise explorer, click on the folder icon right underneath, and then type in the following. This folder location doesn't need to be created ahead of time. ProjectWise will create it for us. The first subfolder that it will create, this variable, and that will reflect the name of the data source that the user is connecting to. Another level of subfolder that it creates, part of the working directory, is that this variable will reflect the user that is logging into the data source. So for example, when John logs into this data source, his working directory will be pw underscore work pw-13 John. And when Greg log into the same data source, his working directory will be pw underscore work pw-13 Greg. Generally, this is a good practice that each user should have a unique working directory. However, if users are using both ProjectWise and Civil 3D, then a more recommended approach will be for ProjectWise users to have the same and consistent working folder path similar to this. This is to avoid Civil 3D trying to work out the folder path when dealing with data shortcuts. This approach will only work assuming ProjectWise users are not sharing the same workstation. So as mentioned, if users are not using ProjectWise and Civil 3D, it is recommend to have each user having a unique working directory general. We definitely want to validate the first option for general is disabled, as well as use access control is enabled. The reason is when ProjectWise administrators set up the access control, for instance, who should or should not see certain folders or documents, or even who should or should not be able to delete certain folders or documents. We want users to be able to apply to it. If 
the use access control is unchecked for a user, then the individual does not need to follow the access control that are set up by project-wise administrators. This setting is really important. All users should have this option enabled, even for project-wise administrators as well. On rare occasions where project-wise administrator account with this option disabled to troubleshoot access problems. Once it has been rectified, project-wise administrators should re-enable this option again. In the user interface category, we want to leave the first option enabled because this is kind of like a preference and we want the users to be able to choose how they want to work. For example, the local document organizer on logout. Some users may prefer to show the local document organizer when their project-wise explorer session end to remind them the documents that they currently have a check out. The document category, we want to disable the first option so that users cannot change these options in ProjectWise Explorer. We want to make sure that all these basic document permissions are enabled. Users will need these permissions to be able to work with ProjectWise documents. Later on in a separate lesson, we will go through how ProjectWise administrators can set up permissions to prevent users from working with documents in a certain folder. The document list category. We want to make sure that the show subfolders is enabled. This setting will make ProjectWise Explorer act like Windows Explorer by showing both the folders and documents in the document list area. The double click action. Currently, it is set to default. When users double click on a document of which they have the rights to modify, this setting will check out and it will lock the document and prevent other users from working with this document. Majority of the time, when we double click on a document, we just want to view them. So what we can do is we can change the default action. So double click on default from the drop down. We can select view or open as read only and then hit OK. So changing this behavior, now when users double click on a document, it will open as read only rather than locking it. So when users truly need to work and modify the document, users can still right mouse click on the document and select open. We also want to disable the first option under folder category to prevent users from modifying these options here. We also want to leave all the basic options enabled. Later on in a separate lesson, we will go through how project-wise administrators can set up permissions to prevent users from viewing, renaming, or even deleting a certain folder. The document creation conflict. Go ahead and double click on the action and then double click on default action. Let's go ahead and select creating a new version. So once this is set up, when users drag and drop documents into a project-wise folder and the document with the same name already existed, a dialog window will display and the option create a new version will be automatically selected. Let's go ahead and hit apply. Now that we have set up the desired user settings in the user template, when new users get created, all these options that we just went through, it will be inherited into the new users that we are going to create in the next lesson. During this lesson, we have learned what user settings are, as well as the practical use of user template. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.